Story 1. True and Terrifying Events Okay, this is a long read considering how outrageous my experiences are and how frequently they occurred. I live in New York, about a 40-minute drive north of NYC, and these experiences I am about to write here have been the most insane and the scariest events to have ever happened to me in my life. So it all started actually with a friend of mine. She lives in an apartment, and at the time she was living alone. It all started with a phone call. I was at my home on the other side of town when I had gotten a phone call from my friend. She was a bit frantic and shaken up. She was asking me if I could get over to her apartment fast because she had locked herself in her bedroom because she had thought there was an intruder or a squatter in her apartment. I asked her what was up, and she went on to tell me that she had heard some slight noise in the living room. And when she looked out of her bedroom, she caught the blanket and sheets on the futon being very clearly pulled under the futon, as if someone was underneath the couch and was pulling the sheet and blanket in order to cover and hide themselves from being seen under the futon. So naturally, I got into my car and bolted over there as fast as possible. Once I arrived, I ran upstairs and let myself in the apartment. I had my knife out and ready in case there was a confrontation with some crazy squatter bum. I walked in and went right to the futon and yelled out, Whoever is under this couch better come out now because if I look under here and see you, there's going to be some serious problems for you. I got no answer. So I pulled the sheets and blanket off and looked. No one and nothing was there. I got my friend to unlock her door and come out and assured her there was no one there. She knew what she saw and I didn't doubt her, but there was definitely no one in the apartment. And that event began the ever-growing insanity from that exact second onwards. Just a quick note. I had stayed there at the apartment prior to this, and never was there any problems. Never heard or saw anything, never got any type of strange feelings. And I've slept in both her bedroom with her, and have slept on the futon in the room alone, never having an issue prior to all of this. So at one point while I was there at the house with her for the day, to provide company and comfort so she could feel safe knowing that, if there was actually an intruder popping in and out of the house, somehow she'd have some sense of security, knowing that I was there, and I most definitely would never let anything ever happen to her. As I'm there, she runs to me in the kitchen and grabs me hard by the arm and tells me to shush, then points to the next door vacant room and tells me to listen and to tell her what I hear. I slowly make my way to the door and press my ear to the door. Sure enough, I hear what sounds like whistling, and faint conversation. I step back a second, a bit wide-eyed, and ask who's in the room. She assures no one and asks what I hear. I tell her I hear whistling and conversing. She flips a bit and says to me, See? So you hear it? I assure her yes, and it was at that point I knew for a fact that this wasn't a home invasion or a squatter, etc. I looked in the room and it was empty and quiet. I told her immediately that this isn't some home invasion. At least not by humans, it wasn't. I've heard and seen this before, and this was textbook paranormal. For a bit after that event, she was convinced someone was breaking into the house, or a squatter was living in the walls, which that one made me laugh. I lost it when she said that, and told her to think logically. I told her, You think there's some cold squatter bum living in your walls who are talking to themselves, and or someone else, and just walking between the walls and whistling, hearing and knowing your home? Give me a break, LMAO. So she proceeded to call the police on more than one occasion, and each time they came, they took a look around and found no one, and each time looked at her as if she was completely crazy. I demanded she stop calling the police at this point because I knew for a fact that this was paranormal. I knew it 100%, and the police won't and can't do shit about this. At this point, I move in with her for a bit to keep her company and see what's up as well as keep her safe, well as safe as I could against unseen forces. At the first time of me hearing the slight whispers and whistling, I was immediately intrigued and wanted to check this out more. In reality, from what had come from me being there for such a long period of time, I kind of wish I had just stayed away. At the same time though, as terrifying as these events were and became, I'm glad I was able to fully experience what I had experienced because most people won't ever have run-ins with demons and or the paranormal the way I have during these events. I take it as a blessing and a curse, a good and a bad, 
Although there are a select few events I could have done without ever experiencing due to the intense and sheer terror they caused. And I do mean terror. Anyway, so at this point I'm now staying with her at her apartment. It's just me and her. And these demons, which I'm unsure how demons actually work. But from what I was able to physically see and feel, it was like we were surrounded by tons of them. And when I say see, I literally mean see. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I was seeing full-form horns, spike tails, red evil pitchfork demons, like from literature or movies. These things were different. Maybe they appear different to everyone. I can't answer that. But what these things look like, the best I can describe them is that when you saw them, it was like having your eyes blurry a bit, but mixed with a thick air patch, almost like rippling water. Or when you can see the heat dissipate from the hood of a car on a hot summer day. Basically, it was like some form of interruptance in normal air, or waves, or whatever you can call it, a mix of thicker than normal air, static, rippling water, and dissipating heat waves. Where the strange thick air energy beings were, they also had a form of some sort, very human-like, head, arms, legs, torso, and so on. Just static looking, see-through and thicker than air, and very much visible. Some were small, some were big, some short, some tall, and then there were monstrous ones, which were terrifying even more so than the others. I'll get to those ones in a bit. Now I make it sound like I'm talking as if all of them were different entities. I can't answer if they were or not. I feel these things take on whatever form they want to use in order to cause fear to a great degree. Now I know there was definitely more than just one due to one event that'll get to shortly. Anyway, I'm staying with her at her home now, day and night, and the activity picked up at an extremely fast pace. The first night we are staying in her room, laying in bed, all of a sudden, it had to be 3 to 4 a.m. You can hear what sounds like footsteps all around the living room and kitchen, and then you hear very clearly, Hey, kitties. We both look at each other with clear WTF. Looks on our faces, then the cat's meow. Then you hear more footsteps and what sounds like someone, something playing with the cats outside the bedroom door. My friend slowly makes her way to the door and gets an overwhelming stench of rotting flesh, shot rotten eggs, sulfur. The second I was aware of this, my heart skipped a beat and I knew immediately that this was not good. So my friend makes a noise and you hear what sounds like a little girl's voice and then fast rapid footsteps run to the door, open the door, slam it shut and run down the steps to the bottom door. The bottom door swings open and then slams shut. At this point, I'm now beginning to become officially freaked the fuck out, as most would, I would imagine. After a little time passes, we hear the doors open and shut again, and this thing things come back upstairs and into the kitchen, sh living room and continue to make noise. Footsteps, sometimes light like a child, and then sometimes extremely heavy and loud like an eight feet tall, 350 pounds man stomping in boots. The cupboards would open and slam shut, whispers and then very clear and loud conversations between a man and a woman. Once hearing the lady say, shh, they can hear us. At one point, I slowly pressed my ear up against the wall and heard an immediate growling directly where my ear was, almost like it was right between the wall. We made it through that night with no sleep until the activity ceased at about 8 a.m. It would still go on during the day, but not as bad, at least not at this point in time. Now, after a few days and nights of these same events happening over and over is when it began to spiral out of control. At one point, me and her had gone around to different shops in search of help, advice, and items that could help put an end to this. We had bought sage, different kinds of powders to burn, candles and such, and this one stuff a lady suggested. She called it eggshell or something. It was this hard, white, chalky stuff that we were instructed to break up and put around entrances to keep these entities out. So we got home and set everything up. I put lines of this eggshell stuff in front of the bedroom door, the windows and such. We burned sage and powders around the home. I said prayers and prayed for the protection of Jesus and warrior angles to provide a hedge of protection around us, the home, etc. We go into the bedroom that night, and as usual, all the activity in the other rooms continued but this time way worse, louder, and more violent. Items being thrown, breaking, doors slamming, loud vocal noises, lights going on and off, 
sinks being turned on full blast, shower as well, etc. It went nuts, but never entered the bedroom. Yet, we got maybe 20 minutes of sleep very early in the a.m. As I got up to unlock the bedroom door and look at the damage, I notice everything is perfectly in place. Nothing broken. The sinks were on, though, and that's when I saw it. The eggshell line I placed at the door was smudged all over, almost like this thing's made it a point to show and say, hey, this shit won't do a damn thing against me, buddy. Then I saw them. Clear as day footprints leading from the eggshell line to the kitchen, right to the sink that was turned on, then leading to the one open cupboard, then to the bathroom where the door was open, sink and shower on, then leading back to the vacant room next to hers and into the room right into the closet, and that's it. I couldn't believe it. The thing is, the footprints were all different sizes and all had six toes. Some were like baby footprints, some like a giant's some normal sized, and then there was two to three that were like nothing I've ever seen before. It was like a three clawed hoof type of print. Very strange looking. So we go the rest of the day and the activity continued now, even during the daytime. It was on that day when the main big entity made itself known. You were able to tell that whatever this thing was, that it was the one in charge. It was huge, had a very powerful negative energy to it, a very low rumbling vibration that was able to be felt and heard. And it would follow me around the home nonstop. When I moved, it moved right after me, staying literally on top of me. And when it would get right on top of, in on me, I could smell it. It wasn't like sulfur, but it was a putrid, pungent smell and extremely strong. It would make me gag. And the strangest thing, I really hope that I can get some answers on this one. Whenever it was around, we would hear this three-tone noise over and over, it wasn't like singing, it wasn't an instrument, it was like electronic sounding kind of, but would do it over and over and over. The best way to describe the noise is it was three tones, each tone lasting about one to two seconds each and would go downwards and pitch one note for each tone. And you could pinpoint where this large entity was just by its tones it made. Wherever you heard that noise, you would look towards that direction and there it was, large and static looking like a grotesque, monstrous thing. Cut to the nighttime now, and we began to see tons of these static entities now all around the house, and the large tone making one lingering around. But for this night, it was surprisingly calm, and this was the night that the biggest mistake happened. Seeing as it was calm, the girl with me was talking to these things, asking them to please remain this way, and to please not make loud noises, and to please stop scaring us and so on. And then she asked them to do things. Ask them to move a plate on the counter and the plate comes up about one inch and starts to spin. Ask them to spin a cigarette on the floor and it begins to spin. Ask them to turn the light off and you watch the light switch slowly get pushed down till click the light goes off. But everything they did was very slowly and almost seemed weak. Towards later in the night, she says, okay, we want to get rest, so please stay calm like this and quiet so we can get some sleep. We then see what looked like a dozen or more leg imprints form on the couch in the living room after we see the static beings move towards the couch. We close and lock the bedroom door and lay down to try to sleep. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes passes, and we both begin to see these static entities come walking into the bedroom. Right through the door. My heart is pounding just writing this right now. One after the other comes in, and one by one, they come up to the bed and begin to pile on top of me. I feel like I'm being pushed down by tons of pressure, but I'm able to get up and move without a problem. I just put my head down and close my eyes as each one piles onto me. I didn't even say anything to my friend, but she feels the bed moving and looks over at me, and I hear her say, holy shit, with her voice sounding very fearful. I say, I know. I opened my eyes and I can barely see. The static look to these things was now all around me, and I was like, looking through them. Everything was rippling, wavy and static, and I heard and felt an intense low vibration that made the whole bed vibrate. I had the idea of that since these things were emitting such low frequencies that maybe if we play high frequency sounds it would get them away. It did work kind of at first, but they would come right back on me. So we fled the house and drove around all night till the morning. But the big entity 
The one making the three-tone noise followed didn't bother us but was just there the whole time, like it was watching us or keeping tabs on us or something. And as we left the house, we looked up at the windows and saw shadow figures looking, put the windows at us. The morning comes and we eventually go back to the house. The activity continues through the day and then into the night. Now this night it got even more so weird. We would look outside and see what can only be described as like hybrid demon animals. Not walking around, but just stationary. But you could see them trembling at an extreme rate, like they were twitching or vibrating or something. Their eyes glowed similar to a cat's in the dark. Sometimes they would look like a wolf mixed with a monkey or something. It was really weird. And we would hear what sounded like a huge horde or flock or group, whatever, of flying things circling the house. And it made the entire home shake. Like the entities called for backup or something. And they were in a huge flock circling the home. It really freaked me out hardcore. And it was only me and her who would hear and see this all happening. Anytime we'd have someone else come over, either nothing would happen or things would happen, but very slightly. And the other person or persons never saw or heard a single thing. So whatever these things were, it was me and her that were being singled out and literally tormented by these entities. The next night we decided to stand out ground because it's been weeks now of this getting worse and worse. We stay in the living room and sat on the couch and I held her to give her as much comfort as I could. That's when the big three tone-making entity came at me and on top of me, almost felt like it was trying to enter my body. So I pulled up this prayer on YouTube to cleanse and ward off demons. And as I played it, this thing got very hostile, angry and restless feeling. It would run off and we would hear the whole time the loud sound of the flying, buzzing horde circling the outside of the house. Sounding like it was getting closer and closer, but as I kept praying and repeating the prayer video, they would back up quite a ways, but each time the prayer stopped, they would come back, getting closer and closer. So I was freaking and playing the prayer nonstop to keep them from coming. Each time the big entity would run off and then come back, but it would come back bigger than before, I kid you not. This cycle continued for over an hour or two, each time that large entity returning bigger than before, until the final time, this is where I almost literally pissed and shit myself, no joke. It came back this one final time between praying and this time was gigantic. As we heard it come running, stomping towards us, we saw flashes of red light on the walls near us. And as it got very close to us, its static looking form took on a different form this time. It was way more visible, almost taking on a near solid form for a quick second and was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. I grabbed my friend as tight as I could, pull the blanket over our heads and start yelling prayers. This time it didn't run off right away, but was yanking the blanket off of us, and I was holding onto the blanket and her with all my life and strength, screaming, praying, and almost in tears from straight fear. I was convinced in my mind that this was it. This all escalated to this point, and now this thing is gonna take me or us away or do something intense. After a few minutes of this, it stopped for a bit, but we would still hear the three-tone noise in the other room in the closet and the cupboards were opening and slamming. We heard what sounded like a clear, audible group of people in the other room talking and what sounded like a Spanish kid talking on a phone in the bathroom, flushing the toilet using the sink. And it continued like that the rest of the night. The morning finally comes and it calms down a bit, but still continues. The big entity following me around, smelling putrid and also now smelling like the sage we had burnt, but it was overwhelming and stunk so bad I was near puking. Like it was laughing at the fact we even tried sage, almost mocking us. At one point, my friend is in the bathroom and I'm standing right at the door to keep her feeling comfortable as possible. Between the open crack of the back of the door I see this all black thing just floating there staring at me through the crack. It was just like a floating torso, upper body and head. It wasn't static or clear, it was solid black. And its face was all black except its eyes. Wide open, never blinking, all black large pupil area with a tiny bit of bright white on the outside, just staring at me. I didn't say a word to my friend because if she didn't notice it, then I didn't want her to even see this thing. Things continued on like this for days and days, never letting up, never stopping, 
and always getting worse. After quite some time, it was Christmas Eve, and I was going to go be with my family, and she was going to her family as well. We needed a break from that place. So I get to my family's home, and the second I'm there, I feel the big three-tone entity there with me. I start to freak, thinking, no way this thing is here with me right now. How? Why? As I get near anything electronic, I hear static and electronic disturbance through speakers, radios, headphones, TVs, my tablet, laptop, phone. TV screens would glitch and flicker. Everywhere I looked, I was being made to see these demonic visions, literally everywhere. And there was this large purple mist that was flowing me around. I had this horrid taste in my mouth like rotting flesh and that putrid smell that the entity would give off nonstop. I couldn't eat or drink anything due to this putrid taste. Now, my family household is Christian. I was brought up Christian, and my mother especially is very strong in her faith. It gets to be Christmas night, and I ask my family that we come together to pray over me. So we all come together to pray over me at this point, and it got extremely intense. As the praying became stronger, I could feel these things coming off of me. I had my eyes glued shut as we prayed, and at one point opened them up to see a dark black mist in between us all. As my eyes are tightly shut and we continue to pray, it was as if something was trying to pry my eyes open, and as that would happen, I would catch quick glimpses of these terrifying things all around. Towards the end of the prayers, I catch a quick glimpse of this huge, tall entity that took the form of a man, about eight to nine feet tall and huge, I mean solid, wearing what looked like a tattered suite almost, and a bunch of smaller, demonic-looking entities all around this large thing. And I feel a tugging on my body, near my legs, like something was attempting to hold on and not let go as strongly as it could. After about 30 minutes of praying, we all just stop. The taste in my mouth was gone, the smell was gone, and I felt lighter. But I could still feel as if there was one entity still left with me. I know for a fact it was still there, but my mother kept telling me that she didn't feel or sense anything, and it was in my head now, and that everything will be fine. But I knew for a fact that there was still at least one thing still with me. Now it calmed down after this a lot, but that night as I tried to sleep, I would hear the loud thumping of a heavy entity coming upstairs and to my room and right on top of me. But this time now, it always smelled like fabric burning like nylon or something, like my clothing or bed was on fire. I kept waking my mother up to come pray with me more, and she kept telling me that there was nothing and not to worry, but it was there, I know it. It was still so intense, there was no way it was just my mind tricking me. So we go to the hospital to get me checked out, just to rule out insanity or something wrong with me, internally or something. Everything checks out, fine. I get a psych evaluation, and they say I'm perfectly sane. Never in my life up till this point have I ever been looked at as crazy or insane, and it was beginning to get me extremely frustrated. This entity was trying to make me look like I was a nutcase to the world. All this continued on for about two weeks at my home, things walking around me as I sat on the couches, my bed, anywhere. Smells like my clothing was on fire. Fire. I would feel intense heat on parts of my body until I would move away from this entity and it would follow me and get right on me again every time. One night I was exiting my room, the hall light was on and I was going to go downstairs. As I get near the steps, my parents' bedroom is in front of me a ways and I immediately feel fear and danger. I start to pray out loud and at that exact moment, this eight feet plus tall black mist comes charging at me from my parents' bedroom and begins to circle around me extremely fast and is screaming and barking in my ears very loudly. It wasn't like it was one person screaming though. It sounded like multiple screams. I lost it, I stop praying and fall to the floor and start to scream in fear like I've never felt before. My mother comes running and grabs me and holds on to me tight and I feel a tugging on my torso and hear a slight growling to my right. It was extremely terrifying. That was the last big, intense event. After that, it would start to calm down as days passed, but was still there. I'd feel it and see it, smell it all the time. At night when trying to sleep, I'd see the static entities, and they would be peeling the blanket off of me and entering under the blanket, 
pulling at me with what felt like pinpricks and such. One night they were drawing images on my microfiber blanket. One of the images was of what looked like an arm coming out from underneath me where I sat, and then a hand. Like it was waving and saying, hey, I'm inside of you or something. It freaked me out. Things continued for a bit of time, but began to dissipate until things went back to normal. Kind of. I still to this day see shadow forms here and there, dart around, and just have a general feeling like this thing is still around. But waiting dormant or something, I can better explain it. Is this thing still around? Is it possible that out of nowhere, be it within the next day or so or years down the road, that all of a sudden this can all happen again? My entire life has been changed by these experiences. What can anyone make of all this? What the hell went down here? And does anyone out there have any answers as to why that one entity made that three-tone noise constantly? Because I've searched everywhere and can't find any information on that specifically. Story 2. Our bizarre experiences with the forest behind our house eventually forced us to move out. I was eight years old when we first moved into the house on the edge of the forest. My parents had their doubts about buying a house with a backyard bordered by forest. They had concerns about wild animals getting into our bins or hurting our dogs, and were worried one of us might go too far into the trees and get lost. But it was cheap. My dad liked the seclusion. My mom loved the house itself and my siblings and I were excited about playing in the backyard and exploring the forest. Our first sign that something wasn't right was that our dogs were absolutely terrified of the forest. They never went into the forest for any reason. If a toy they'd been playing with found its way past the tree line, they would refuse to retrieve it, and when one of us went in, they would pace anxiously until we returned. On occasion, we'd notice the dog staring at a spot in the forest in obvious distress, sometimes growling or barking, but we could never see anything there. My brother once carried one of the dogs into the trees to show her there was nothing scary about it, but she wriggled out of his grip and sprinted into the house in a panic. If we were in the backyard when it was getting dark, we sometimes heard noises like someone was walking through the forest, sticks crunching underfoot, branches being pushed aside. If we called out, there was no response, but if we shined a flashlight around, we would occasionally catch a glimpse for just a split second of something that we could swear looked like a person walking around in the dark. My parents quickly banned us from entering the forest at all after dark, and even during the day, we weren't allowed to go out of sight of the house. My sister's bedroom window looked out at the backyard and the forest beyond, and she remembers looking out her window one night and seeing a shadowy figure standing right at the edge of the backyard. She says there was something wrong with it, like it wasn't quite standing on the ground, and it was a little too tall to be a person, and it was sort of distorted, and she was convinced it was staring at her. She called for our dad, saying there was a man in the yard staring through her window, and when he ran outside to chase off whoever it was, she continued to watch the figure. It didn't move away, but when the light from our dad's flashlight passed over it, it suddenly just wasn't there anymore. We regularly heard knocking at the back door at night with no one there. Our parents thought it was teenagers playing pranks and stopped bothering even opening the door until one rainy night when the knocking was persistent and agitated. My mom pointed out there might be someone needing shelter from the heavy rain outside, but when she opened the door, not only was there no one there, but there were no wet footprints on the porch. The knocking continued the whole time we lived there. It would happen several times in the span of a few weeks, then stop for months, then start up again. My parents eventually installed a security camera, and there was never anyone at the door. The camera wasn't all useless, though. About three years into living there, my brother started having night terrors and sleepwalking. When he went sleepwalking, he would always go out the back door and start walking towards the forest. My mom, being a light sleeper, would hear the door open and would run out to get him before he made it into the forest. After the third or fourth time it happened, my brother asked to see the camera footage because he wanted to see how he looked when sleepwalking, I guess thinking it did look funny. The footage showed him walking out onto the porch, then pausing as if listening to something, and shaking his head, then reluctantly walking forward as if being pulled or forcefully guided by something. One evening my dad was in the backyard and he heard my sister calling him from the forest, seemingly in distress. Thinking she'd gone exploring in the forest and fallen over and hurt herself, he ran in and started calling to her, 
but quickly realized it was too dark to see her, and he couldn't pinpoint where her voice was coming from. He told her to wait where she was while he grabbed a flashlight. When he ran back into the house for the flashlight, he saw my sister inside, safe and completely unconcerned. At the time, my dad hadn't told us about hearing my sister's voice in the forest, so when I heard my mom's voice coming from the forest months later while I was outside with the dogs one evening, I didn't question it, despite the fact I'd seen my mom inside recently and hadn't noticed her walk past me. My mom was calling to me, saying she'd gotten her sweater caught in some branches and needed me to come in and help her. As I walked in, the dog started barking, alerting my dad, who saw me through the window wandering into the forest. He came outside and called to me, and I said I was just helping mom. He yelled back that mom was inside and I needed to run back to the house as fast as I could, which I did. After this, my parents had a fence built around the backyard and started looking for a new place. In the time between the fence being built and us moving out, it got way worse. We'd hear knocking at the door more regularly, as well as tapping on the windows, as if someone was walking the perimeter of the house and trying every window. We would often hear scratching and scraping sounds on the fence and voices beyond it. My brother's night terrors got more frequent, and one night my mom didn't hear the door open when he went sleepwalking, and he woke up standing at the fence, staring into the forest, with the dogs barking at him. The last morning we spent there, less than four years after we moved in, we woke up to find the back door fully open and the security camera footage showed it slowly swing open on its own. Since moving out, my brother's sleepwalking has stopped, though he still gets night terrors and he suffers from pretty severe anxiety. A few nights ago, he called me out of the blue and after a bit of small talk, he asked me if I think the door being open that final night means whatever was out there finally got in. He was trying to make light of it, saying he was getting into the spirit of Halloween, joking about how maybe we should all get exercise just in case something latched on to us all those years ago. But I think he's deeply bothered by everything that happened. I know I still am a little. I still get nervous around dark wooded areas. I don't know what I think was out there in the forest behind our house at night, but I get the feeling that given the chance, it would have swallowed us whole. Story three, got lost in the woods for eight plus hours as a little girl and saw something unexplainable. I grew up in a densely forested rural area in central Virginia. And like most kids my age, 10 at the time of this story, I spent a lot of time playing in and around the woods. My best friend and I had found a creek one day while exploring different deer trails through the woods. This creek we happened on was a very rare find and the perfect spot for us to play. It was wide and deep enough to swim around in and had nice, soft, mossy banks on either side to rest on after we had tired ourselves out. The water was cool and clear, no copperheads and no mosquitoes because the water was constantly running. We were psyched. After a few hours of swimming, we had to walk back home for lunch, but made plans to pack lunch the next day so we could have a picnic on the creek banks and spend the whole day there. The next morning, we set out for the woods at around 1 p.m., planning to have the picnic first and swim after. We entered at the same spot we had the previous day and followed what we thought was the same deer trail. It was not. At the point where we should have found the creek, we walked into a small clearing that was covered in huge, thick ferns. We had definitely never walked past this before. So being both hungry and tired of walking, we decided to eat in the clearing. We laughed and played around there for a while, spitting watermelon seeds at each other from our lunch. It was an absolute blast and we were both in wonderful, giddy moods. That all changed, however, as soon as we packed up and set back out to find the creek. As we walked on, the woods started to feel darker and colder. We got skittish and I noticed my friend kept whipping her head around to look behind us. After about a half hour of walking, we came up on what looked like an entire overgrown bathroom. Sink, toilet and bathtub all sitting arranged together and covered in ivy. It's pretty common to find weird shit like this in the middle of the woods, so we just walked on and made jokes to lighten the mood, calling it Bigfoot's bathroom. After another hour of walking and not seeing anything we recognized, we started to panic. Instead of trying to reach the creek, we were now just trying to find our way back home, or out of the woods at least. I told her we should follow the sun, and eventually we would come up on a road or someone's property where we could find help. 
She insisted on another way, and we began yelling at each other out of fear. And, let's be honest, little girl bossiness. I told her if she thought she was so right, she should just go her way, and we would see who got out first, so we split up. Now as an adult, I fully acknowledge I was being a stubborn brat, and also an idiot. Worst possible thing we could have done. Not 10 minutes after splitting up, I began to hear someone walking maybe 100 feet behind me. Thinking it was my friend deciding to go my way after all, I slowed down so she can catch up to me. Instead, whatever it was matched my pace. I slow down. It slows down. I stop. It stops. This went on for hours. The whole time I was going back and forth on whether or not it was in my head or there was really something following me. I picked up a big stick, swung it a few times to make sure it was sturdy if I had to hit someone, and trucked on. As it began to get dark, I came up on something that made my heart sink into my stomach. It was Bigfoot's bathroom. I had just walked in a huge circle for hours, despite being 100% sure I was following the setting sun west the entire time. Confused and frustrated, I sat down on a log and just screamed my little heart out while smacking my woo pass stick repeatedly into the ground. As I tried to collect myself, I heard the footsteps again walking up on me from behind. I called out my friend's name as loud as I could. No answer. Then, after a short pause, the steps began to run towards me. I jumped up and booked it fast as I could in the opposite direction. Now this is the truly horrifying part which I typically omit while telling people this story. As I was sprinting through the darkening woods, I began to hear what I thought were church bells. I looked up to see the darkest, deepest cloud I have even seen in my life. In the middle it was so black, it was like looking into the night sky, and the dark gray around it seemed to be swirling. It gave me a horrible feeling to look at, almost like the nausea you get when looking through binoculars too long. What sickened me further is that I realized the sound of the bells was coming through the hole in the cloud. They were deafeningly loud, I mean really booming out of this thing. When I realized this, I stopped dead in my tracks. I felt a sense of absolute and overwhelming dread that has gone unmatched in all my 24 years on this planet. Something in my head began screaming that if I did not run away from whatever the hell that cloud was, no one would ever see me again. I would be gone. I did not want to run toward the thing chasing behind me either though, so I made a sharp right and took off away from both. It was now completely dark and I was running blind through the woods, smacking through branches, wheezing, and tripping every few feet for what seemed like another hour. Until I smacked into something low and flew over it, hitting the ground so hard all the air in my lungs was knocked out of me. As I lay there trying to recover, I realized I couldn't hear the bells anymore. Then my eyes adjusted more to the dark, and I realized what had just made me go ass over teeth was an old fence. Grabbing hold of it, I prayed it would lead me to a farm, and sure enough, it did. I walked up over a hill about a mile to the back of the farmhouse, explained what had happened, and the farmer graciously gave me a ride back home. I was covered head to toe in scrapes, oozing blood, and more exhausted than I had ever been in my life, but I was finally safe. It was past 9 p.m. when I finally walked through my front door. My friend had gotten back shortly after we split and figured I had as well, so hadn't told anybody I was lost, and my family just figured I was still out after dark, which wasn't uncommon for me. They were shocked when I walked in, beat up and crying. Nobody had been looking for me at all. To this day, I wonder how long they would have waited to come find me if I hadn't been lucky enough to find the fence, and if it would have been too late. Thanks for watching. Don't leave before leaving a like to this video. Also hit the subscribe button to support my work. And as always, have a horrific nightmare, my dear.